Let's now go on with part 25 of emergencies in first aid and we'll talk about foreign body or liquid. Foreign objects are often blown or rubbed into the eyes. They are harmful not only because of the irritating effect on the eyes, but because there is a danger that they will scratch or become embedded in the surface of the eye. So what will be the signs and symptoms that there is a foreign body or a liquid that has gone into your body or your eyes? There's going to be redness of the eyes, burning sensation or itching in the eyes. There's also going to be pain, headache, overproduction of tears, like that. Okay, so you can see like for this one, the eyes have been become reddish like that because of something that entered it. Precautions you want to take, you want to make sure that you keep the victim from rubbing his eyes because that can actually spread also ever chemical that went in the eye or something like that. You wash your hands well before examining the victim's eye. Do not attempt to remove the object by inserting a match, toothpick or any other instrument in the eye. Never do that. Obtain medical assistance if there is something or thought to be something embedded in the eye. All right. So there can also be removal, removal from the surface of the eyeball or from the inner surface of the eyelid if you can remove what's there. So put down the lower lid. The lower lid you put down to examine whether or not the object lies on the inner surface of the lower lid. Okay, you, you are suspecting that maybe something went in the eye but you don't know where it's located. So if you're suspecting that maybe the object that went in the eye is down, down the lower eyelid, you move it down and if the lower eyelid moves down, the object might be seen with stuck to the eye down. Okay, so you'll be able to remove if possible like that. Another thing that you want to do is, if the object lies on the inner surface, Lift gently with the corner of a clean handkerchief or paper tissue. Never use dry cotton wool around the eye as it can leave pieces in the eye. Okay. If the object has not been located, it may be lodged beneath the upper lid. So you just want to check out on that part also. How about removal from the upper eyelid? So while the victim looks down, grasp the lashes of the upper lid gently. Pull the upper lid forward and down over the lower lid. Tears will dislodge the foreign object. If the foreign object has not been dislodged, depress the victim's upper lid with a matty stick or similar object placed horizontally on the top of the cartilage and pull upwards on the lashes against the match stick. Lift off the foreign object with a corner of a clean handkerchief and place the lid by pulling down gently on the lashes. Okay, you would have removed something that was on the upper lid. Suppose also to flush the eye with water, pouring lukewarm water from the inside corner of the eye across the eye uh, across the eye. If the object is still not removed and is suspected to be embedded, apply a dry protective dressing and take the victim to the hospital. If the foreign substance in the eye is liquid, such as acid, flush the eye, right, as follows. If the liquid in the eye is acid, flush the eye for at least five minutes with a solution of sodium bicarbonate you want to neutralize that acid. You want to use 5 mL or, or 500 mL of water. Okay. If you are using sodium bicarbonate, you use 5 mL. For water, you use 500 mL. If the liquid in the eye is alkaline, flush the eye for at least 15 minutes with water. You don't want to use an acid because you want to neutralize the base. If it is in the ear, Treatment of a foreign body in the external canal or the ear, how do you do it? Some precaution you want to take. If the object is something that will absorb liquid and swell, do not put water or oil in the ear. For example, beans, corn, berries, these can actually absorb it and swell. So you don't want to put 
water in the ear. Do not probe for the object. Do not push anything in the ear to, to make sure that you remove that object because it can actually end up pushing it even further and cause injury to the eardrum. Right, that is very important. Place a dressing over the ear to prevent the victim poking his fingers into his ear. This victim, especially if it is children, children want to do that. They will start pushing their hands there. They want to remove it, and actually they are just pushing it more inside. You make sure that you take the victim to the hospital in order to have the object being removed. If it is an insect in the ear, try shining a touch near the opening of the ear. Often the insect will claw out after seeing that touch. Okay, place a few drops of warm oil. It must not be too hot into the ear and it will float out if the insect is there. Okay. How about in the nose? You have got a foreign body. Instruct the victim to blow his nose, making sure that he inspires through his mouth. This is made more effective by blocking the unaffected nostril and blowing out the affected uh, or through the affected nostril. Instruct the victim to breathe through the mouth. So they breathe through the mouth, they close the nostril that is not having the object, and then they breathe out through the nose like that, right? Take the victim to the hospital the object has not been dislodged by the above measure. If the victim is a child, keep a close eye on him to make sure that he does not put fingers in the nose and end up pushing it even all the more. So this is going to be helpful because it might the child might push the object further into and risk inhalation of the substance. They can actually breathe it in and it can go to the lungs like that. Okay. How about if the foreign substance is in the digestive tract? In the case of swallowing a foreign body, watch the stool to see if the foreign body is passed in the stool. If the object was sharp, for example, a safety pin or piece of glass, take the victim to the hospital. An X-ray may detect the position of the object in the GIT. Okay, so these ones are very dangerous. Make sure that you take them to the hospital. How about if the foreign body is in the respiratory tract? It is possible for foreign bodies to be inhaled. They get to be breathing, so they may cause choking, and therefore they require the appropriate face. And however, the object may succeed in passing right into the bronchus where it will need immediate medical attention. Observe the victim for signs of respiratory distress because they're going to be having some difficulty in breathing and such. There's something that has blocked the airway. So you need to make sure that you get the victim to the hospital as quickly as possible. Okay. How about foreign bodies in the skin? Small foreign bodies, for example, a wound splinters, uh, wood splinters, shards of glass. Usually these are going to cause minor puncture wounds with little or no bleeding. If foreign bodies deeply embed in a wound is not the removed. So if the foreign body that is deeply embedded in a wound is not removed by the first aider, it may cause further injury. So for example, you can use splinters, small splinters of wood. I mean, if, if there are splinters in the skin, small splinters of wood, metal or glass in the skin, particularly the hands, feet, and knees are common injuries. It should be drawn out by using tweezers. So for example, this one, you, you have got a splinter on the skin there. This is a tweezer. You can actually use it to be able to remove that object there. How do you get to manage someone who has got foreign bodies in the skin? Clean the area around the splinter with soap and water. Sterilize a pair of tweezers. You want to make sure that you remove any infections or if they are and bacteria or something like that from the tweezers. How do you do that? You pass them through a flame and then grasp the splinter 
as close to the skin as possible, squeeze the wound to encourage a little bleeding. Okay, and then apply an adhesive dressing plaster. All right, after that little bleeding has happened. So that is it on this part. In the next part, we talk about fire prevention. Thank you so much for watching.